guys. Well, we're here July 1st. The transfer window just opened. We've got a lot, a lot going on and a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. All right. First off, let's take a look at some transfers. So Fabian Dittmar, we signed him. He's joined us. And most of the guys that we have signed, pretty good. This guy is for the future. But just about everybody else, we're going to send them all on language courses. We're going to try to get all these guys welcomed in real quick. I always get nervous when I've got a lot of people because then, you know, sometimes I've had players say, nah, I, I'm good, man. I'm good. But uh, anyway, team registration. Auto select, so we're up to 48. So the good news, you'll notice here, now it's not non-Austrian players. Now it's just non-EU players. So now we can go out and get all those guys on loan, <laughs> and they'll be all right. So that's good. That's good. All right, now let's get down to some business. Some business. So I applied for two jobs. I applied for Cardiff City uh, there in the championship and I applied for the Berlin Union job. So they took forever. Berlin Union, the fans laughed off my interest. Laughed it off. So then Cardiff finally came in about a week ago and gave me an interview. And I'm favored. I'm favored. Then I get a thing saying that Berlin Union would be interested in talking to me, but they can't afford to pay the termination clause in my contract. So I went to the board and I said, "Hey, I'd like, you know, I'd like you to lower this." And they said, "No, we just rather you get on with your job." So I had to pull, you know, pull the 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 heavy card out of the deck. I had to play play a little gamble. And I said, well, you know, if, if you can't do this, you know, I'm really interested in the job. If you don't do it, I might just be forced to resign and then they can hire me and you don't get anything. You know, I'm trying to at least give you, you know, help the club by getting something for me. So they said, OK, you're kind of forcing our hand. We're not happy about it, but they did. So I had the, the Cardiff job and I'm the favorite. And then I just had an interview with Berlin Union and I was not the favorite right away, but then I became the favorite like two days later. I don't know if the other guy passed on it, uh, turned down the job, whatever. But anyway, that's, that's what's going on. So Union Berlin approached me. I asked them for a week to think about it. It's a two-year contract at a million a year. The problem with Berlin Union or Union Berlin, let's take a look at them. So they only have adequate training and youth facilities. So that's the first thing. Finances are only okay. So that's, that's a problem. Now, I like the history of the club. I kind of like, because in real life, they have, you know, they finally got into the Bundesliga for the first time. They're in the, they're in the capital city or in the largest city in Germany. And they got to the Bundesliga in 2019 or 2020 for the first time ever. And then the pandemic hit. Great. But anyway, in real life, if we take a look, now this only goes back to 2049. So that's 21 years. So they were they got promoted back to the Bundesliga. So they had fallen out, went back into Bundesliga 2. I don't know how many times they've been up, but they did get promoted, immediately relegated. And then they've been kind of a mid-level team with the exception of 59-60 uh, when they got relegated and then came right back up the following year. So... This is an opportunity to maybe get them back to the Bundesliga and get them dialed in as a permanent fixture there. Maybe. Now, on the downside, on the downside, 22,000 seat stadium, 
rebuilt in 2020, but it's only got 3,600 seats. That's, that's shocking. That's shocking. And if we take a look at the schedule, uh, you can see just through here, 16,000, 22,000, 20,000, 17,000, 22, 19. So they're bringing in 19 to 21,000. So they're right near the upper end of their capacity, right? But they need more seats. I mean, they just do. So if we go in and look at Cardiff, I'm the favorite there. Cardiff is excellent and state of the art. And if we look at their overview, so they, they've been bouncing between the premier and the championship for the last two decades, got relegated out four years ago and have just started to drift down. They're currently in 10th. So it's, you know, I don't know. That's, that's the, you know, thing. So championship is the 26th overall league second bundesliga is 27th they're right neck and neck from a club standpoint just from a sheer club standpoint right 38 39,000 with 39,000 capacity in normal matches all seaters so that's positive and if we look at towards the end of last year 28 29, 29, 38, 27, 39, 28, right? So they're bringing in upper ends in some big matches, but you know, they're only, they're still, I mean, but you're, they're still bringing in almost 30,000 people which is money. I mean, that's money to afford, right? So, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Where is... Right here. Oh, so yeah, two year, 100, 105 million. There's a lot more money in England, but I don't know that I've ever... I don't know that I've ever managed in Germany. My concern is, is that Union Berlin, we've got such an uphill battle to climb. Because even if we get promoted, they're not ready for the Bundesliga from just from a sheer monetarily standpoint, right? Now, I do like the story. It would be a country I have never managed in before. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I've droned on for nine minutes now. There was a lot of other stuff, but you know, this is this is kind of the key point. So we've put Union Berlin on hold for a week. We're waiting on Cardiff, and I just don't know what to do. My brain is telling me go to Cardiff. My heart, while I have no ties to either club, my heart's telling me go to Union Berlin. I like the I like the story behind the club. I like the fact that they were long suffering and finally got to the Bundesliga and they've basically been in and out of the Bundesliga. Have they ever won the Bundesliga? No, they've won the second Bundesliga three times. 20. Okay. There we go. So 22, they went up 23. They went right back down 24. They won again. And then 24. I don't know when they came back down. But then they've basically been, you know, they won it again in 41. But then you can see they got relegated in 48. So in there, I don't know. The other thing is, in the second Bundesliga rules, now you have two teams that get promoted. One team goes to the playoff. You know, finishing in the top half of the table nets you $20 million. We're only picked to finish mid, you know, uh, mid table. I mean, we're picked 11th preseason. So there's no real pressure there. Pandaborn was the other club that was open. I didn't apply for them. Um, what about, 
Cardiff in the championship. Cardiff is picked fifth. So they're picked to challenge for playoff. And I think in the interview, that was the minimum expectation was to reach the playoffs, which, what is it, top six? Two automatic promotion and then three through six go to the playoffs. I think that's right. So we'd be, you know, we'd be in the playoffs there. Cardiff is not a club that I, I detest. Um, I don't root for them, but, you know, because I'm a Leeds fan. Uh, on the flip side, I've been to England several times, and they've got what? It's an ungodly amount of games. 46 games. 46 games. Longer seasons, all that other stuff. In the second Bundesliga, it is 34 games. So 12 less games. So we would be quicker seasons, a little more action. You know, the problem is if Cardiff offers, man, can you turn down the money that they've got, the pockets that they've got, the facilities they've got? What are the rules here? Uh... I did look at these. There's something weird. There's some, you know, so eight players trained in the same nation. So you've got to have, if you don't have this, these players, then it decreases the amount of players you can have registered. Now they allow it to 99. So that's not a huge deal, but these first two, that's tough. Because I don't, I don't understand those precisely, and these always screw me up. Twelve Germans in the squad, German players. I know from watching other series, very expensive and very hard to come by. Much like Austria, we were paying a premium for Austrian players because of this kind of rule. I don't know. Well, I'll be back in a minute, and we'll let you guys know what happens. Assuming I get, you know, they come back and still offer me the job or Cardiff offers me the job. All right, I'm back. I had to move off camera because you can't see who I'm holding. It's not allowed. You can see her hand. Look right there. But you can't see her. So you stay over there. But Pop Pop got a new job. So Cardiff has not offered me yet. And Union has come back after the week delay. And as I said in the intro, Head's telling me Cardiff, just because better all-around situation. Gut is telling me and Heart is telling me go with Union Berlin. Haven't managed in Germany. Just a better, you know, maybe a better story. So their goal is to work within payroll, finish mid-table this year, and continue being a second Bundesliga team. Uh, 1.05 million a year, 80,000 transfer budget, and 20.78 million in payroll. Oh, stay off camera. Off camera. No, don't come in. <laughs> Hold on. I'm about to move that. All right. I'm just going to go off screen, guys. I'll come back. I promise. I'm not going to leave forever. Um, so. I'm going to take the job. I'm going to take it. Uh, top division. I want a bigger raise. You're going to cut me 35 if we go down, and you're going to only give me 15 if we go up. That's bullshit. Can I get a third year? Really? Eh. They agreed to everything else. All right. We'll do it. There we go. Now. Hold on, before, before we hit next, I want to kind of show you the transfers because this is the last time we will see. So we have uh, sent off a bunch of guys, a few guys here, but we have brought in. Now all these free, yeah, tell them, tell them. All the free guys, these are mostly young guys. Now Dittmar, uh, we got him into contract. He played last year. James Bond comes in from Chelsea, a right back. He's all right. He's got some upside. Daniel Naylor from Middlesbrough. I think he's going to be a good striker for us. 
Uh, Spine Arn Matheson, Matthiason from Brescia. There's our new central midfielder. Uh, Kenicky, uh, he was he's uh, our new right winger, but he got hurt and he's out. He's out for uh, about four weeks. So not happy about that. Uh, Jacobson, we paid 98000 for another good striker. So I was trying to add some depth. And you can see all these guys are guys I couldn't look at before. But they're all in the EU, so they don't count against the uh, minimum Aust Austrian and, and maximum where we could only have seven players. And I know I'm leaving the club, and this doesn't matter, but still, these are guys that I had signed. Uh, this is a guy for the, yeah, kind of for the future. Uh, Thomas Nicholas from Inter. Uh, he could play a lot of positions, and he could fill in at center back. I think he could do a job at defensive mid. Uh, probably be an upgrade there. And Michael Blind. Uh, he could play all three back line and be a pretty good center back, which we needed. So I was trying to upgrade. There was a bunch of positions I was still going to go after, but it matters not at this moment because we are leaving and we are now the gaffer at FC Union Berlin and we will be moving from Austria to Germany. Usually I think historically that works opposite Germany to Austria, but that's not important. I had just hired a bunch of German coaches over in Austria too, but we're moving to Germany. We're going to be in Berlin. And uh, so when we come back, we will be looking at uh, probably next episode. We'll look at the area and some of the club history, which we've already kind of talked about uh, the club history. But, uh, yeah, I'll do all this other stuff off camera. And uh, then we'll get back in. I'll need to see about getting into the transfer window and everything else. So let me get busy. I have a lot of work to do. What the heck does that mean? Is that some kind of fish? Possibly? I don't know. Oh, well. All right. Well, we'll see you guys back here in a bit. Hey, guys. Oh, wait, let me, let me, let me sneak into the room here. How's it going? Doing all right? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I've been busy and I've been spending a lot of money, a lot of money. We actually had some deals fall through because I couldn't afford them. <laughs> couldn't afford them. All right. Well, here's our friendlies. We're 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 scoring goals. I don't put a whole lot of stock in that, but the uh, you know, the good news is we quit allowing a lot of goals. We were actually down three to one in the first match against Will before we uh, stormed back. But uh, five, five, six goals. Hopefully that carries over. Let's take a look at the finances. So we had a $4.7 million transfer budget and I've got none left. And we're currently spending $15.8 million out of our $16 million payroll budget. Probably can't afford that. We're probably going to lose a shit ton of money this year. You can see they end up at about $15 million in the hole every season. Well, it gets a little worse. $12, $14, 15. We'll probably be 18 million in the hole this year. And I guess, I guess we get some decent money. Yeah, so we're looking at probably getting, you know, 18 to 20 million finishing mid table or higher. So that's the goal. That's the goal. Now, where are we projected to finish? 13th, 36 to 1. And I think we're. Seven to one on relegation. So what have we done? Well, Carlos, we uh, that had to get canceled. I was disappointed. Gareth Mead got canceled. So uh, yeah, little disappointed there, but uh, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. So let's take a look. Transfer history. 
we sold out 4.1 and we brought we brought in 4.2 so yeah pretty much broke even and we got a lot of players for our money so the big player that we got rid of was drissa dioni uh, he was our starting center back, 27 years old. Not bad. He's not bad. But uh, they came in with a good offer and uh, from Mainz 05. So went ahead and moved him out and then signed two or three guys to replace him. Uh, Paderborn, that was the other club that was looking for a coach this year. Uh, Jurgen Stein. This was a youngster, 15 years old. This was done by somebody at the club. I did not offer this guy out. And the next thing I knew, he was sold. He's 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 okay. He is only 15. I normally wouldn't sell 15-year-old kids. You know, these guys are in our youth system. But he was under contract through like 73. So I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, I went in and I looked at the uh, settings and I don't see anything that would allow them to sell players without my authorization. Only thing I can think is this is something that was kind of in place ahead of time. Uh, we moved off Ariel Suarez uh, right back. You know, he was not bad, but lacking a little bit of pace. And we got 79000 for him and Nico Ackerman. A uh, 35-year-old starting goalkeeper uh, went to Dynamo Dresden, and we sold him for a few thousand above value. Uh, Jurgen Stein, the youngster, uh, we are going to get 450 up front, and it will increase to 1.4 million over time. So, who have we brought in? Well, first person we brought in on a free was Nico Ambrosch. Uh, he can play central mid. He can play the straight line all the way back. He can play right back. Not the paciest. He's got four and a half star potential, but he's solid. You know, um, he can't head, so he won't play center back. But he could play defensive mid in our four four two. I am looking at a different four four two with a flat four mid, so he could fit in there. Uh, he does have decent passing, and that's something. A few seasons back, uh, you know, I started looking at a little harder then we spent seventy eight thousand on carl draban from osnabrück and these german pronunciations i may not get them all but there's our new goalkeeper 27 years old rather than 35 very solid skills i do like him so he is going to come in and be our first choice keeper uh, nino dornabush another free uh back line player again Again, won't play center back because he can't jump and head the ball. But he could play left and right back and do a decent job. He's not going to be great, but he is only 17. So more down the line. Casper, uh, I'm guessing that's Casper Bukalski from uh, St. Poulton for $475,000. Uh, he's a left back, and he's going to compete for the starting left back job. 21-year-old Austrian. Uh, we started bringing in some foreign players. Uh, Fortuna Dusseldorf, we got a loan in Mike Bearer. He's going to be a reserve keeper. He might even be our number three choice, but he's real cheap. And so, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure while I was waiting on the Draband and uh, Ackman saga to play itself out, I said, let's bring this kid in on a loan. He's not bad, and he gives us some depth because – Worst case is we have a youngster that will be our reserve keeper, and this guy can go and play for our actual reserve team. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Telus Katitas comes in on a free, uh, another left back, uh, lacking just a touch in pace, solid heading, marking. Uh, again, just some depth. He's 18, so hopefully he can grow a little bit. Dominic Schmidt for 1.3 million. He is going to be one of our center backs. Better pace, not quite the acceleration, but very solid in the defensive practices. Maximilian Volger was 275, and I thought he was going to be my big signing of the season. Uh, he's also all three back positions. He can fill in at center back. The heading's a little light, but it's there. But he can play the other ones. Decent, you know, decent enough crosser. Not great, but you know, at a six. But he can pass the ball. 
I think he could be a solid wing player, four and a half star potential. Jonas Keller comes in from Magdeburg for 140,000. Uh, another right back, he's going to be depth. And Arturo comes in from Wycombe, 250,000. There's another center back for us, heading again a little on the low side, but he's a 25 year old Spanish player. <clears throat> Four star potential, and I like his uh, like his abilities. Uh, plus, he can pass the ball. He's got a ten, so he could actually be a little bit more of a ball playing defender, uh, playing out of the back. From Arca, jeez, uh, I don't even know. Is the G silent here? Arca Dania, Dania, I think five hundred seventy five thousand dollars. Benedict Stein. 27 year old German. So we went out and got a. Now, this was after we sold Drissa Dion, our starting center back. I had been looking at guys for backups. This guy's coming in as a starter for us. Uh, 14 marking, 13 tackling. So liking him. Norbert Roos from St. Pauli for 500000 Another center back. And he, he looks good. I like him. I like him a lot. And he's only 22. And he's German. And then Aurelian Galliard from Olympia Grujas. I don't know. Gru, yeah. Olympia. That's it. $600,000. And uh, he is a left winger. Um, good defensively. Can take some shots. Crossing ability. And good first touch. Decent passing. So... You can kind of see the trend I was going after here. Uh, if we take a look at the team report, uh, these are only going to be our two stars and better off of both squads. So, uh, and I want to show you this guy because I have gotten some big offers for him. But uh, Dimitri uh, Citas is going to be our starter, Tom Hill, and then uh, Christoph Beats and this kid. Amir Reza Salamat. Now, he's ineligible. He's on a youth contract, and I cannot offer him a professional contract yet, which is aggravating because look at this kid. Pace, acceleration, 14 finishing. Hello, this kid could play for me right now, and it will not let him. Uh, he's valued at 53000 He is wanted by a lot of teams, uh, or he was. We've gotten offers. Bayern... Uh, Bayern brought him in on trial and then offered us almost $3 million. Uh, he came on my radar because I hadn't been looking at the youth squad yet. <clears throat> and we got a bid for, I think it was a million six, and it was accepted. And I went, wait a minute. And I went in and I canceled it. I said, no, I'm not selling this kid. And then it, you know, other teams started coming in. I think I ended up getting five bids for him. Uh, the last one was for almost we're right at three million dollars. Uh, so I've got an eleven point five million dollar uh, request uh, that I've put on him. Uh, minimum minimum offer that I'll even consider, uh, and I'd probably take that to be fair, uh, just because I know we're we're gonna need the money and we're gonna have to be a selling team, but. Ugh, but he can't play for us. Uh, I am looking. I was looking for a left winger. We will. Uh, winger's going to be a trouble spot this year. Worst case scenario is we might have to go to three central mids, and you'd, you, I don't want to do that. But uh, anyway, uh, so there's there's what we're looking at. Uh, Felix Muller and Drabond. He's 29. Let's compare these two because I haven't I haven't compared them yet. Even shot stopping. Drabon's in blue. Distribution, aerial. Much more eccentric. Better communication. Muller's a little faster, but yeah, I, I think Drabon's gonna be my number one. Uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna have to remember that now here's one thing so i play a lot of sports games college football pro football for you know american football um baseball basketball uh and a lot of the games will allow you 
to set your own depth chart. Can I do that? No, I cannot. Um, so I I could place Drabond up at number one, or I could you know choose to force start him, irregardless of what my assistant says. I don't know why Football Manager doesn't allow that, but so be it. Anyway, anyway, so we have spent four point two million. We have sold out 4.1 million, and um, we're not projected to do very well. I am a little concerned because I have maxed everything out, and I don't know how how this is going to go over. Uh, I was personally responsible for having seven people return their season tickets. Uh, because there was a drop of seven season ticket holders uh, after from last year to this year. And uh, so that's interesting. Uh, taking a look at the squad hierarchy to get started. Very good locker room, average leadership support. Uh, I do have an unhappy player, uh, and he had 11 people that agreed. I did promise that I would strengthen the squad. I wish it gave me the date that this happened, but... You know, we did just go out and sign three or four center backs, right? I mean, no. One, two, technically three, four, five. You know, so hopefully, hopefully they get over their shit. And the funny thing was, two of those guys I already had contract offers out to. That's another thing I think the game could do better. I think it could recognize, you know, the players should know, yes, he just sold this guy, but we can also see he's already got offers out on other people. I don't think this meeting should have ever happened, and I don't think in real life this meeting would have ever happened uh, with with Sitas, uh, but whatever. Whatever. If we look at the hierarchy, uh, I do have uh, two leaders in Citas and Bloom, uh, three other highly influential players, and uh, no players oppose me. That's good. Uh, Ten players support me, including uh, our captain and head striker. And uh, so hopefully we can get a couple of these other influential players, but we'll see. We'll see. Low self-belief, really. Hmm, interesting. All right, well, we're opening up today against uh, R.W. Essen, and then we have the Polkel first round. We'll probably only do the one match because of the transfer window, but we'll see how long it takes. If it's a really quick match, we'll throw that cup match in. Otherwise, uh, we will not. Let's see. All right, so we're on the road. We are underdogs. All right, so I've actually changed the tactics this year from what we've done in the past. They are still 4-4-2s, yes. Uh, we do have this one and this one, which are home and away, but they are slightly different tactics off the same setup. And then this is the flat 4-4-2. So... I am thinking, I want to try this one. And uh, the only thing I've done on these is I've dropped the lines one notch and I've taken off the offsides trap. That's the only thing I've done uh, to these. Uh, let's see. And I do want, yes, I do want Drabond in there. That's, that's the guy I wanted. Yes, it is. All right, let's submit the team. Let's get out and play some football. So I never got the job offer. I never got an actual offer from Cardiff. Uh, but as I said in the intro, I was, I probably would have liked the Cardiff job better. Oh, we have to give the, the green speech to open the season. There we go. I've also taken off all the penalty kicker kick takers. I let the team decide that. 
Uh, I think that's a neat thing to do. And Loki's the one that did that. And I, that's who I kind of picked that up from. But I've been doing that <clears throat> basically forever. So, but I've been playing this forever. And, you know, well, not forever, ever, like some of you guys. But um, anyway, so, but yeah, I'd said that, you know, my, my, my heart was, my, my head was telling me Cardiff would be the better job. Oh, Hill takes a shot get in there woo what a wonderful goal it says big assist and that was brilliant i do like the kits i don't know what our home i forget what our home kits look like but this is our way kits i do like it because you know why it ain't freaking red and that's good anything that's not red is good anyway um so yeah, my head was telling me Cardiff would have been the much better job, but I really liked the story behind Union Berlin. And next episode, when I when we do the intro, we'll come back and we'll look at the city and the stadium and everything else and, and talk a little bit more about it. But uh, excellent efforts and watch your step. But uh, basically, in a nutshell, the uh, well, we have like green, uh, neon green lettering. That's cool. Oh, there's a cross headed out. Good. Oh, nice little stab there by Abscop. Sitas. Oh, he! Oh, I thought he was going to be fouled right there. Nice ball out, and that goes in. Dirk Argerter, Argerter, Egeter, Egeter. I don't know. I'm going to go with Egeter. I think. However, I say it is what it's going to be. Dirk scores a goal. <laughs> Dirk, oh no, they got a cheap one there. Mateus Brzezowski. Brzezowski. Too many consonants in that name. Oh, that was not good. All right. Let's give him a um, demand more shout. Oh, made the keeper nervous. All right, let's pull. All right, we got Bloom. No, Schmidt. That's not a bad reserve option, is it? Let's bring him on. Uh, Marasco, I really like him dribbling he looks really good so he is our right midfielder do i have another yeah right here allegretta i believe yeah let's bring him on for marasco and i think my next sub will be for egeter once we get there but I kind of like the storyline with with Berlin uh, Union Berlin. So you know they're they're evidently a very long term club. They have actually, I, I think I think I was reading that they closed down once. Let's see, Bukowski. Who do I want here? Bukowski. He doesn't look bad. Galliard. Yeah, I could I could probably go either way. All right, we'll do that. And let's uh let's praise. But the fact that they went so long had had never made it to the Bundesliga in real life until last year. Until last year, that was crazy. All right, Citas, nice ball. Oh, look at the touch pass. Allegretta back inside, and Tom Hill. That's his second goal. That's a brace today for him. 
And that puts us up 3-0 in the 88th minute. I think we've got to have sewn this one up. Very happy with the performance. Definitely looking good. They might get a cheap one back here. Nope. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, through ball. He wasn't off sides. That was probably lucky. And we almost got another goal there. We will take a corner. But the fact that they just made the Bundesliga last season for the first time ever, ever, is just, you know, and I know they've gotten a lot of run in, in you know, quite a few of the articles that I've read as far as, you know, hey, you know, teams, oh, look at that goal. He just took it into the edge of the box. Gallus gets his first. That was a cheap goal, but that's okay. We'll take it. So, um, now in the game, as we looked at earlier, you know, it looks like they've been up and down several times, but they've never been a constant in the Bundesliga. Uh, and of course being back in, I think they were back down. What did we see? Now I, I recorded that intro yesterday after I took the job. And then I, this morning I was doing a lot of the off season stuff, but, um, it was what, 20 years. 20 years, uh, and that puts us at the top of the league. That is great. Bukowski makes his debut. Hill, two goals and six headers. We're going to like that. Uh, let's see. Club info, history overview. So, yeah, so they had gotten relegated back in... 50-51, so they've been out of the Bundesliga again in the game for 20 years, two decades, and then they even got relegated down to the uh, to the third division uh, once, came right back up, but they've never been higher than sixth that they've done a couple of times. You know, then they had that fourth, fifth, Six. So they've never been higher than about six on average, mid table or worse. Let's go ahead and call that an episode. I mean, we had a lot going on with the transfers. Um, I've spent a lot of money. I don't know how that's going to transpire. We'll see. <sighs> I'm nervous about that. I was really hoping to keep that a little more in check, but I just can't help myself. Uh, I, I go out and I, you know, what I, what I usually do, and this is my failure as, as playing football manager is I don't do a great job evaluating my club and what do I actually need? I look at my scouts. I don't really go out and find players. I trust my scouts to do it, but when they come in and it's a guy that can be a really, that looks good, looks affordable and can either start or be a primary backup off the bench. I'll usually try to sign them. And uh, that's, uh, you know, and then I end up with a, a, you know, 40 man roster, you know, or whatever we may have. So if we look at our squad registration here, it is, it's only 31 players. Uh, and you can see that we have the guys on youth contracts that are ineligible. Uh, that's our keeper. So I need to take those guys off. Yeah, we don't want that. What that does is I didn't even know that was there. So if you, I have the, the setup to be at 90% fitness, um, or 90% physical condition. So these are the only guys in that condition because we just played the game. So, uh, you can see uh, Stadler coming back from injury is 76. But anyway, all right, where do we come back? I think we come back relatively quickly. I'm tempted just to come right back and do the Polkel first round and mains. And that way we have a cup game in there. What's the expectations to reach the second round? So we should win this one. Let's come back for that. We'll come right back on the flip side. And we may do a few more episodes than the norm here in the first season, just as we get to know the team. But uh, a lot of that I judge on how many I have recorded ahead of time, you know, how many episodes I have set ready to go for net the following week, uh, because I do, you know, I, I do work. So I try to have a reserve of 
four or five episodes at any given time. That way, if I miss a day of recording, you know, you guys don't miss an episode. So I'm trying to think ahead and have the foresight for you guys. But anyway, first episode of a new club. So please smash that like button like a hundred times. Um, the more likes, the more people that can see the video. And then that introduces my stuff to more people. And that's all I ask of you guys. Thank you very much if, if you do that. And uh, subscribe. Hit the little bell for notifications for the daily content update. Except for Sundays. I do not upload on Sunday. I record on Sunday, but, you know, that's a recording day. And I don't usually do. And I do a lot of rendering and posting of videos. Uh, you know, I schedule them. So, like, I've already got episodes here up so i'm recording this saturday morning i think i have monday and tuesday's episodes already on online it's just they're scheduled so you guys can't see them or access them until they actually get released uh, as a public release but i do that and I'll, and I'll usually try to have three or four days just because you know i never know with my job you know it may be a late night it may be i got stuff to do at the house with the family um, who knows what's going to come up. So I try to plan ahead. But anyway, let's come right back uh, for the next episode with that cup match and mains. Schalke, that'll be interesting to play them because they have uh, they have fallen on hard times. This would have been a club I would have liked to have uh, gotten their job, but they weren't available. You can see they've been bouncing around Bundesliga for a while. They they've made it back up into the into into the Bundesliga, but you know, a year a year at most and then the second year they get relegated. Uh the other team I saw in here that looked familiar was it uh I've heard of Hamburger, Mainz, Dynamo Dresden, I've heard of them. I think cuz Loki did a save with them, did he? Did he not? Pretty sure, but Schalke is the one that jumped out of there. And went, wow! Second Bundesliga. That's a that's a Bundesliga club. Pretty pretty good one too. So uh, anyway, we'll see you guys. I, I ramble, ramble. Bye.